Welcome back to Wonderworld. It's episode nine, which means we're nine weeks into this park. That is absolutely insane. I can't even, it's like comprehend it. It's gone so quickly. And just to think that after this episode, there's only two episodes left before the tour as well. This park is going to end quite fast, which I don't know whether I'm prepared for. It's gone really, really quick. Obviously, I'm still working on the next park series that's still coming in time. But yeah, nearly finished. It feels very odd. Anyway, this week we are continuing the more classic area of the park that I started last week with the kind of old style log flume. And this week I'm building an old style wooden wild mouse. Now I know not many of these exist, but the one that this one's going to be inspired by is the wooden wild mouse, simply known as Wild Mouse, that was at Blackpool Pleasure Beach that sadly is no longer with us. I'll put some photos on the screen now so you can see, but I absolutely love this coaster. I don't really know why it closed, it was probably for safety reasons because it was quite an older ride or whether the ride had degraded past its shelf life or whatever, but I was absolutely devastated with this coaster open. You can see a picture here of it being demolished, it's genuinely heartbreaking. I absolutely love this coaster, visiting Blackpool as a child especially, I just fell in love with this coaster. It's, it felt so crazy and out of control and that's kind of what I wanted to replicate here in this classic area of Wonderworld. Now these rides aren't really going to fit in with the theme of the park like the other ones would. I feel like the Wonderworld, oh no, Wonderworld Co. would have uh, only brought in these newer like kind of themed experiences as the park um, progressed kind of like in time and competition would have grown just in the theme park industry in general like parks getting more and more themed rides. So that's kind of sort of where the whole idea of this area came from, creating like a classic theme park selection of rides. Like these rides would have probably been opened with the park. And because the park, uh, the Wonderworld Park team are good at keeping on top of maintenance and everything, these rides are still here today for people to enjoy. But as you can see, certain aspects of building wild mouse coasters is not easy. As you'll see, most of this episode is basically just me tinkering away, trying to get the transitions and the speed and the banking right on most parts of the ride. Because I don't know whether you've seen a POV of one of these, I suggest you go and watch the POV for the actual uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach Wild Mouse, but there's little to no banking on these and some of the speed it takes the corners, it's absolutely insane to watch, especially to experience the memories I have of this coaster, it's so funny. Like just the speed it takes some of the corners and then you'd approach a block section like the one I've just built there and it would do absolutely nothing, it was hilarious. Then while I was taking a break from building the coaster, I thought I could add a better centerpiece to the uh, main street of the park, so I added a ferris wheel. Just like the log flume last episode and the collection of classic rides this episode, it's all about building up a collection of rides that would have been in the park pretty much since it opened. Obviously as the park's progressed, got more visitors, some more money, they've been able to build larger and more thrilling attractions, but they've kept and restored these older attractions that basically made the park what it is today. I really like it when theme parks do that and I think it's quite important, especially with Alton Towers, there's quite a few rides that have been there, like take Nemesis for example, that ride's nearly, what, 30 years old in a few years? Yeah, it was 1994, so in 2024 that'll be 30 years old, hence why it's getting this retrack work. I think it is a really good thing to look after these older rides because essentially they make the theme parks what they are today. Obviously that's nothing in comparison because when the Wild Mouse at Blackpool closed that was around 57 years old I think. 57 years old for one coaster is absolutely insane. There's coasters out there today that I know that are even older than that so. So I think it's really important that parks preserve the heritage of what basically made them what they are today. Then after I'd put the ferris wheel in because I'd basically destroyed half of Main Street I rebuilt the area around it by adding the queue barrier around the ride and then rerouting the existing pathway throughout the area. Now don't panic, there is going to be some rides for you all to name this week, but I just wanted to name this Ferris Wheel Wonder Wheel. I thought it would be the most perfect name for it, you know, Wonder World, Wonder Wheel, I just thought it worked. And talking of naming rides, I need to name the Intamin launched family coaster that I made in episodes 6 and 7. So I decided on quite a simple name, which is kind of a mashup of um, three different comments, but just going to go with The Haunting. I thought it was quite a nice simple name. I know I said I wanted Castle in the name originally, but I just quite like this. It's nice and simple, and I think that it goes quite well with the ride. It's a good thing as well that Jan's pointed out, as one of my favourite series is on Netflix is The Haunting of Hill House, which is part of a large collection of series just called like The Haunting of series, I guess you'd call them. So it's kind of a nice uh, reference for me for that as well. And then also the amount of people that commented Waltron, which is... <laughs> Uh, a joke that kind of happened in the past couple of episodes when I introduced the uh, Pandora coaster which is the Mac Big Dipper or now as they're calling it the Striker coaster but oh well I'm still going to call it the Mac Big Dipper but um, that coaster because the coaster that I based it off is called Voltron which is a new coaster opening at um, Europa Park 
and you all just thought, screw it, we'll call it Voltron, because that isn't at all similar to uh, Voltron, which is the actual coaster's name. So for the people who commented that, the guy that owns the house can be called Mr. Voltron, I guess that can be his surname. Are you happy now? I then spent what felt like a couple of hours just reprofiling and rebanking certain areas because this ride doesn't ride particularly smooth anyway. I don't know whether it's just because of the type of train or the type of track, but some parts of it were like a little bit extra rough. I've done it on purpose in some areas, like I've added a little bit of jank, just, just a little sprinkling of jank, just because obviously that's what these coasters are like. They were built way before like kind of computer designed coasters were a thing, so they were probably just built, I don't know, just winging it as they went along, which isn't a bad thing. It gives them a lot more character than most coasters. I mean, it's probably how a lot of wooden coasters were, were built in the past as well, but yeah. So you'll probably notice it as I'm going along, but you'll notice it especially at the end of the POV, but there is a few little bits that uh, will make you question my design decisions, but just rest assured they are done completely on purpose. you probably notice as well that I've moved the station from outside the coaster. It was originally underneath it and now it's to the side of it. That's just because of how the in-game supports work in this game. I wasn't going to go and custom support this coaster like I have for the rest, so it just messed with the in-game support, so that's why I moved it. And now it's time for some flat rides. I know if just a few of you have been commenting saying where are this park's flat rides and obviously I added that one flat ride last episode but because this is the more classic area of the park it's going to have a few classic flat rides so I added in this chair swing thing here, I don't know what the proper name is, um, another spinning kind of sizzler ride in the background and then another spinning ride <laughs> to the side. It's a lot of spinning rides but I don't know what any of them are called so feel free to tell me what they are but some names for these in the comments would also be nice as well. Something to do with, I don't know, it's a ride name that sounds nice and classic, I suppose I'd say. So get commenting those away, and obviously the name for the wooden wild mouse as well. Once I'd placed all the flat rides where I wanted them and added the queues that circle around the rides, I added the same Victorian tile that's on the main street of the park but just coloured grey instead and created these like pads that went around the bottom of each of the rides. This is just because I don't like how the flat ride pad is in game and how it doesn't blend with the actual uh, queue that goes around it and it just brings a nicer sense of cohesion to the area. Then as you've just seen I created a boundary fence out of the wooden like stakes and uh, it's actually for the mulch or mud piece that I've used it's a I think it's the topping for one of the cake pieces that I've just coloured brown because it kind of gives the um, the uh, mud texture I was after and then I created all the railings here by just setting the Victorian tile slightly below the surface but keeping on the same building so I could see where the paths were, I could place all the railings around and then at the end of it I just raised the whole like building set back up so that the uh, Victorian tile's on top. I then added the don't die fencing that goes the whole way around the coaster and then started work on this little ice cream service kiosk. Back when the park was a lot younger, obviously most of the buildings on Main Street might not have even been there. Like, there could have been one or two restaurants or something, so I thought I'm going to add like a classic kind of food place, which would just be an ice cream shop now. Like It could have been converted uh, more recently as the other restaurants opened up, but I just thought this area needed quite a nice building that looked quite classic, obviously in keeping with the uh, time period of when these rides would have been added. So I created this ice cream stall. And then just one thing that I like to do in my parks is just debrand the uh, store units. I like the fact that Planet Coaster has like its own brands in the game, but I just prefer having my own brands. And then I built this uh, maintenance fence here, because all the uh, flat rides are on the same pad, it'd be easier to just access them all from the same gate. Then after this I used the same tile and added a seating area outside the ice cream shop, and then moved on to creating the uh, perimeter wall of the Wild Mouse queue. This is just a simple one metre tall wall with some planks on top and then an upside down fence. I just thought it gave quite like a classic but still smart aesthetic to the uh, queue area. And then I moved on to the last part of the coaster which is the station building. Obviously this building would have been built quite cheaply when the park was first made so it's just a simple brick structure and then the uh, pitched roof with the oak beams. And that's it for this week, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next week when we are building the park's final coaster, which I'm very excited about, obviously I've already made it so I know what it looks like, but um, yeah, I'll leave you with a little tease for that after the this ride's POV, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next week for the second to last episode of Wonderworld, see you then.
here we are back again on Main Street. The Intamin launch family coaster just there in the distance, and then this colossal Ferris wheel just plunked right there. This is actually the smallest Ferris wheel in the game, like the smallest actual Ferris wheel, but I think there's two sizes bigger than this, but I just thought the classic Wonder Wheel would have been a nice addition to the park. Probably would have been one of the first additions, but I'm adding it nearly last, which makes sense, but we're rolling with it. Then you work your way down here just towards the log flume, and then on your right you've got the perfect view of the wild mouse. I absolutely love it, I'm so happy I built this. It's just the perfect homage to um, the wild mouse from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Nice reminder of it, and it's just a really fun classic ride that I wish was still, uh, still with us at most parks, which is such a shame that they don't exist anymore, but it complements the log flume of the uh, over the river, lake, whatever it is, quite nicely as well with the little food unit. You can get quite close to the ride so we've got some nice views. I wish you could change the actual mouse colours individually because the, the Blackpool one, all the uh, mice actually had names, which is quite funny. And you've got the three flat rides down here as well, the three classic flat rides, and a massive, massive gap off to the left. You'll see what goes there next week. I'm so excited what that's going to be. It's flat ride spinny number two and flat ride spinny number three. If you want to suggest names for these, go ahead. If I don't get any name suggestions for them, I will just probably leave them unnamed, which is fine. Or make up some, but yeah, you can suggest the names down below for those. And with that as well for the Wild Mouse Coaster, which is going to need quite a cool name. I, Wild Mouse is fine, but I, I feel like it needs something a little bit extra to make it cooler. It could be, I don't know, Wonder Wild Mouse maybe, I don't know, something cooler. You're much better at coming up with names than I am, but yeah. So I will see you all next week after this POV and the tease for next week's episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then.